I believe the proper word to describe it is fashion. Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a wonderful week and are ready for a brand new ranking video. And this is one that I have definitely been working on for the past few weeks, so I am super excited to get into the topic today. Now, while many of you have seen my Ranking Disney Princesses video, which was the second long form video that I ever did, it was about time that these incredible female characters made a reappearance. And so for today's video, we are going to be ranking the fashion of all of the Disney princesses and Frozen Queens. But if you think we are just going to be ranking them based off of their one iconic look, you would be incorrect. Because I have compiled a list of 60 outfits worn by the Disney princesses in their original animated movies, and we are going to be ranking them all from worst to best. It's a massive task, I'm not gonna lie, but somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> if you are excited for today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator and I make magical content on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and YouTube. And you can find me on all of those platforms at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. Now, believe me when I say we have a lot to discuss today. So really quick before we jump into today's ranking, I do have some brief disclaimers and conditions for the list today, but if you would like to jump right into the ranking, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost, for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company, I do not speak for the brand or the company, and all of the opinions in this video are just my own. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these wonderful characters and movies in my comment section, so make sure to let me know all of your thoughts down below. Because believe me when I say I know that I have some incredibly unpopular opinions about the fashion of the Disney princesses, so make sure to advocate for your favorites down below. And as for the conditions for the list today, the outfits being ranked ranked in today's video have to be worn by an official Disney princess or Frozen Queen. We will only be ranking the outfits worn in their original animated movie, with the exception of Anna and Elsa who also have a Frozen 2 movie. Those outfits will also be included in today's list. The list today will only consist of outfits that they are wearing when they are an official adult, so no outfits worn by the princesses when they are babies. And lastly for the conditions, keep in mind that this video is only ranking the Disney princesses based on the fashion. If you do want to see a full ranking of the Disney princesses based on their personality and their songs and their role within their story, I already do have a full ranking of these Disney princesses, so I will link that video up above. And we are also only going to be limiting the list to 60 outfits today because Believe it or not, the princesses, they wear they wear a lot of clothes, and <laughs> we only have so much time in each video. But with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we're ready to start ranking some Disney princess fashion. And because there are so many iconic and not so iconic outfits on this list, we are going to be ranking them based on a tiering scale. I will be sure to discuss each of those tiers before we get into the outfits that fall in each of them. And so with that, I think we are ready to begin ranking. So without further ado, sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let the fashion show begin. <laughs> we are starting today's video all the way down in the F tier. The F tier consists of outfits that I simply do not like. They either don't necessarily look great on their corresponding princess, don't have nearly enough screen time in order to make a good impact, or show the princess in a relatively negative time in her life. Overall, these outfits just don't give me the best vibes, and so that's why they rank at the bottom of today's list. Starting off today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 60 is Jasmine's prisoner outfit from Aladdin. Now, I'm gonna be very honest, every time we see Jasmine in this outfit on screen, it is extremely uncomfortable. She is made to wear this outfit by Jafar, who is trying to court her, so that way he can gain power over the city of Agrabah. And while she does help rescue Aladdin while wearing this outfit, it really just feels very uncomfortable. And so for the negative energy surrounding the outfit, it goes all the way at the bottom. Next, moving on up to number 59 on my list is Snow White's rags look from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now, I don't necessarily hate this look. What I do hate about it are the shoes. I do not like these shoes whatsoever. I think they bring the look down significantly. Now granted, I know it's necessary to see Snow White in the rag so that way we can appreciate her princess look a lot more, but I just don't like the shoes. <laughs> and so Snow White's rags go at number 59. Moving on up to number 58 on my list is Ariel in her nightdress from The Little Mermaid. Now this might be a controversial opinion, but I do not think Ariel looks good in the color pink. 
and I think she looks even worse in a simple pink outfit. Granted, she wears this for very little time in the movie, so I don't necessarily mind it, but they could have chosen a much better color for her, maybe like a seafoam green. Yeah, this one just doesn't do anything for me. But next, we're moving on up to number 57 on my list, which is Anna's green nightdress from Frozen 2. For a very similar reason to Princess Ariel's nightgown, this just doesn't do a whole lot. I do think the color is a little bit better on her, but overall, it is a very muted and dull sort of color that doesn't really do anything for Princess Anna. But she doesn't really wear it much, so I don't mind it terribly. Next, we're Moving on up to number 56 on my list, which is Ariel's sail dress from The Little Mermaid. Now, it is very safe to say that Scuttle is not a fashion icon. <laughs> this look is meant to be very silly, considering Scuttle has to put her in something so that way she can meet Prince Eric. But realistically, it is a sail and some ropes put together, and it is definitely not a glamorous look for a Disney princess. <laughs> Next, moving on up to number 55 on my list, which is Cinderella's nightdress from Cinderella. Again, relatively plain, relatively dull. A lot of the nightdresses fall in the F tier for a very good reason. <laughs> but why it ranks the highest so far is I really like the color on Cinderella. I think it really complements her eye color and her hair color. But with that, we'll move on up to number 54 on my list, which is Anna's green ending dress from Frozen 1. For the very same reason as the night dress, this dress just doesn't have a lot of contrast. It's not one of my favorites from this movie. And in all honesty, I think it kind of makes Anna look a lot more plain than she has for the rest of the movie, considering a lot of her other fashion moments are very eye-catching. This very plain, simple dress just doesn't do a lot, especially when it's the big finale of the movie. Next, we move on up to number 53 on my list, which is Cinderella's servant dress from Cinderella. Now, once again, much like Snow White's rags, we are meant to not really like this look, considering Cinderella will look significantly more glamorous in the future in this movie. It's meant to be a very sharp contrast between peasant Cinderella and princess Cinderella, but it ranks higher than everything else on this list so far because it is made up of multiple different colors that, again, I don't necessarily think makes Cinderella look bad. It's just not glamorous and it doesn't really do anything to elevate her looks. And with that, we're moving on up to number 52 on my list and the final outfit in the F tier, which is Tiana's work outfit from Princess and the Frog. And when I say work outfit, I mean specifically at the end, when she has gotten the key to Tiana's palace and is ready to start working on her restaurant. Again, we don't necessarily see her a lot in it. It's in like two or three shots of the movie when she is with Prince Naveen, getting the key from the Fenner brothers and also starting to work on the restaurant. It's okay. It doesn't do a lot. It's definitely the highest ranking so far but it still lands in the F tier today. And with that, we're gonna move on up from the F tier to the D tier. Now the D tier consists of outfits that I don't really love. Some of them are okay, but in all honesty, these are just not my favorites. I don't severely dislike these the way that I do the F tier, but they just don't do a lot for each princess in my opinion. So moving on up to number 51 on my list, the first of the D tier is Tiana's Cal's outfit. From Princess and the Frog. Now, again, we don't really see Tiana a lot in this outfit because she really just enters her room, puts her tips away, collapses on the bed, and then immediately changes out of this outfit. I don't think it looks bad on her. It just doesn't do a lot for me in the movie. Next, we're moving on up to number 50 on my list. This one is going to be a controversial one, I can already tell. At number 50 on my list, is Ariel's blue dress from The Little Mermaid. Now, I don't want to spoil too much for my ranking Disney princesses video, but I love and adore Ariel. What I don't necessarily love about Ariel is the fashion for her in this movie. In my opinion, a lot of Ariel's human looks very much feel like they were dresses just lying around the castle, and they don't necessarily feel like they were handpicked by Ariel. The feel that I get is that they were just laying around and she was like, well, I'm here and I don't really have many options, so I'll put this on. Again, the blue dress isn't the worst look that she has in this movie, but it's still not one that I really like. But with that, we're gonna move on up to number 49 on my list, which is Mulan's matchmaker dress for Mulan. Now, while I do think this is a very pretty outfit for Mulan, it unfortunately is worn by her in a time when she feels very constricted by societal norms. She seems so much freer clothing-wise when she joins the army and afterwards, and it is very strange seeing her dressed up like a Barbie doll. And I just really don't think this is her vibe, even though it is primarily what she is marketed in with the Disney Princess brand. Disney, I really think there are better options. Can we give her some armor, please? <laughs> but with that, we're gonna move on up to number 48 on my list, which is Elsa's light purple dress from Frozen 2. I think this one is quite pretty on Elsa. I definitely don't think it's her best look by far, but overall it's just not bad. It's a nice purple dress. Next, moving on up to number 47 on my list, which is Rapunzel's princess dress from the very end 
of Tangled. I think this one is, once again, okay. I feel like Rapunzel could have had one very good solid look at the end of her movie, and what we got was this sort of muted purple that we've seen her in for the whole movie. This is her moment of becoming a princess. I would have expected a little bit more from an ending dress, especially with her cut hair. But overall, definitely not the worst princess dress on this list. Next, moving on up to number 46 on my list, another one that I'm gonna get some heat for, which is Ariel's pink dress from The Little Mermaid. I do not like Ariel in the color pink. I said it before, I will say it again. I don't like this dress. It is actually designed and meant to be an homage to the three princesses that come before her, as there are elements of Snow White, Cinderella, and Princess Aurora's dress within hers. But unfortunately, I don't love the combination of Ariel's fire engine red hair with this pink hue on her. Pink can look very good on redheads, but for some reason this palette just doesn't work for Ariel. Again, in my opinion, you might absolutely love it, in which case I definitely want to hear all your thoughts on it down below. But yeah, I just don't love this dress. As a wonderful alternative, the Disney Princess brand specifically did introduce a teal version of this dress for Ariel, which I absolutely think looks fantastic on her, but she doesn't wear it in the movie, so unfortunately we cannot rank that outfit today. But this teal dress for the Princess brand would definitely be a top 10 outfit for me. But next we'll move on up to number 45 on my list, which is Elsa's dark purple night dress from Frozen 2. You might also recognize this as the night dress she wears while singing Into the Unknown. Now I love this color on Queen Elsa. I think she looks fantastic in purple, and having her in this dress for the big first number that she has in the movie is just a wonderful idea. You can tell that they put a lot of thought into what she was going to be wearing in this song, considering Queen Elsa's songs are arguably the most popular part Part of the Frozen movies. So yeah, I have nothing bad to say about the night dress. It's, it's just a, a night dress, is what it is. <laughs> but with that, we'll move on up to number 44 on my list, the final outfit in the D tier today, which is Rapunzel's classic purple dress. I'm so sorry. I have definitely said this before. I don't necessarily know if it was in my YouTube video. It might have been on my TikTok, but I am not a fan of Rapunzel's wardrobe. Being such a popular Disney princess, I would have expected her to have something more spectacular in her wardrobe. While yes, her identity as a princess is meant to be hidden from her within the movie, and so it does make sense for her to have a peasant-like outfit, I really wish it wasn't the main outfit that's used to represent her within the Disney princess brand. Granted, I do have to say I really like the color on her, so I will give credit where credit is due and rank it well above the other dresses on this list, but in my opinion it's just not going to surpass the D tier. But with that, we're gonna move on up to the C tier. The C tier consists of looks that I think are okay. I do not dislike seeing the princesses in these looks. They're definitely not near my favorites, but I just have very neutral thoughts on these looks. But some of them are better than others, so let's get into it. Starting off the C tier with number 43 is Tiana's masquerade dress from The Princess and the Frog. Now, I do like this look on Princess Tiana. I do think, however, that the color is a little bit muted, and I really do think that this was meant to be done on purpose, considering she's not necessarily a party guest so much as the caterer for this masquerade ball. We see in the restaurant beforehand that she has been paid by the LaBeoufs in order to bring her beignets, and so she really seems like an employee at this event. So it would make sense that her dress wouldn't necessarily be the most eye-catching and spectacular, but still I have to say I honestly like this one more than everyone so far. <laughs> Next we're gonna move on up to number 42 on my list, which is Pocahontas's classic outfit from Pocahontas. Now, I will be completely honest, I do like this outfit for the character of Pocahontas. However, much like a lot of the other elements of Pocahontas, the movie that we've discussed, it is not culturally or historically accurate. Granted, I also understand that it would be difficult to bring a historically and culturally accurate version of Pocahontas to a Disney movie, so we will have to suffice with what we got. I do think the added element of her mother's necklace is quite beautiful, and she is also the only Disney princess to have a tattoo with her armband, which is a fun fact from my Disney adult versus Disney trivia video with my friend Michaela, which I will link up above in case you would like to take a fun Disney quiz with me. But yeah, while overall I do like this look, but I also know that it's not accurate to the real Pocahontas, and we do have to respect the real life woman that this image is based on. So next we'll move on up to number 41 on my list, which is Jasmine's purple outfit from the ending of Aladdin. Now I like this outfit, but we barely see her in it. Once again though, it is culturally inaccurate based off of the countries that Jasmine was inspired by, and so while she looks very nice for the ending of Aladdin, it's not the most impactful and it's also not culturally accurate, so it doesn't necessarily rank that high for me. Next moving on up to number 40, 
40 on my list is Anna's winter wear from Frozen 1. Now, I like this outfit from Anna. It's definitely not my favorite that she has though. I think the colors that are chosen for this outfit do give the character a little bit more life, but I do think they are an odd assortment of colors. Granted, understandable because Anna buys this outfit as an absolute last resort, but yeah, overall, it's it's okay. It's not my favorite, but it, it's acceptable. It's okay. <laughs> and next we'll move on up to number 39 on my list, which is Merida's light blue dress from Brave. Now, Merida in the light blue is definitely not as impactful as when she wears darker colors. And the reason for this is because of her fiery red crazy hair. It's rather difficult to rank Merida's fashion because her hair really does take over her entire look. But regardless, if we were to look at this dress based on the dress only, it wouldn't do a whole lot, but when paired with Merida the princess in the dress, I do have to say I like this look a little bit more than every other one that we've ranked so far on the list today. It's just a dress that requires a dramatic hairstyle to go along with it. <laughs> but next we'll move on up to number 38 on my list, which is Jasmine's classic teal outfit from Aladdin. Once again, it's a very nice color on Princess Jasmine, it's just not culturally and historically accurate. I actually much prefer Princess Jasmine's park outfits to what she appears in in the movie. She has this beautiful sheer netting on her arms and her bodice is extremely beautiful. And so, yeah, I really like the park outfit a lot more than its movie counterpart, which I don't say often, so props to the Disney team for that. But next we'll move on up to number 37 on my list, which is Mulan's classic green and yellow dress from Mulan. This dress is, it's okay. It's okay. It's it doesn't really do a whole lot for me, but it's it's fine. It's it's fine. Oh, the enthusiasm pouring out of me in this moment. <laughs> yeah, I really don't have a lot to say about it. It's just kind of okay and I it's going to go where it goes. But next we're going up to number 36 on my list, which is Cinderella's pink dress from Cinderella. Now I actually kind of like this dress. Now I know this dress is meant to be pretty enough to where Cinderella could wear it to the ball, but nowhere near as spectacular as what she ends up wearing to the ball. So I'm gonna give it to her. I kind of like this dress. And in all honesty, it's even more meaningful considering that it was originally her mother's dress and the fact that it's also put together and made by her mice friends. There's a lot of energy and hands on that dress that sort of get Cinderella ready for the big moment. And it honestly is very heartbreaking to see the dress torn to pieces. But in all honesty, I'm kind of okay with it because we end up getting an incredible dress out of it, which we'll talk about very soon. But next we'll move on up to number 35 on my list, which is Mulan's blue dress from the ending of Mulan. This is the dress in which she meets the emperor and defeats Shan Yu. And I like this dress. I like it quite a bit. In my opinion, one of the best dresses that Mulan has in this movie. There are other outfits that I like her in significantly more, but we will get to those later. And I kind of wish we got to see this blue dress in the parks because I feel like she feels a lot more comfortable in this dress than she does in her matchmaker outfit, which is what we typically see her in at the parks. But next we're gonna go up to number 34 on my list, which is Elsa's coronation dress from Frozen 1. Now again, I like this dress. It does feel a little constricting on Elsa though. And the reason for this is because it's meant to be. She wears this dress at the very beginning of Let It Go, and once she has her dress transformation, she just feels and seems so much freer in her energy. But overall, I do think it is very pretty on her. I do think she looks very regal and queen-like, which is the point of the dress. And so yeah, I'll say I like it, but it's not amongst my favorites. But next we'll move on up to number 33 on my list, which is Tiana's Duke dress from Princess and the Frog. Now we actually see Tiana get to go to work in this dress. So we see her in it for a little bit. And I really like the color on her. I think she looks fantastic, especially when she's not meant to be a glamorous girl yet. This uniform shows that she is hardworking and that she is going to do what she can in order to achieve her dream. And I think this simple dress looks very, very beautiful on her. Again, definitely nowhere near the best that she has, but now we're getting into the fashion that I really like. <laughs> so next we'll move on up to number 32 on my list, which is Anna's white dress from Frozen 2. This is the dress that she sings Some Things Never Change while wearing. And while I don't have a ton to say about this dress, I like it. I think it looks very beautiful on Princess Anna and I think it is a great way to start off this film. Once again, is it the best that she has? No, not even close. But this is the point on this video where I actually start to really like the fashion on these ladies. So yeah, Anna's white dress goes at 32. Next we're moving on up to number 32 one on my list, which is Aurora's Briar Rose peasant look from Sleeping Beauty. Now, for being a peasant outfit, 
I love this look. I think the headband and the little scarf that she has, and also the laced up bodice is just absolutely gorgeous on her. Again, like I've said, not nearly the best look that she has, but I do think for a peasant outfit, this is absolutely gorgeous. And this is really the main dress that we see her in. This is the most amount of time that we spend with her is when she's in this dress. And so I'm really glad that we actually got something that I really enjoy. And honestly, huge shout out to Princess Aurora for having a peasant look that I like quite a bit more than a lot of other regular princess dresses. But next, we're moving on up to number 30, the halfway point of today's video, and also the final outfit within the C tier, which is Anna's travel dress from Frozen 2. Now, this dress is a lot more plain than her original winter wear, but I like it significantly more. I think the dark colors really help contrast with her skin tone and hair color, and the colors also help to show us that she's becoming more of an emotionally deep character. She's not necessarily dressed in the sunshine and rainbows that she is in Frozen 1. She is on a journey to get a job done with her sister, and she's dressed for it. It's appropriate, and she looks really good in it, and so I rank Anna's travel outwear as number 30 on my list. But next, we're moving on up to the B tier. B tier is a relatively small tier that I just simply say I like this dress. I don't necessarily have a lot to say about each look, but I just generally like these dresses and outfits. So with that, we'll start off the B tier with number 29, which is Raya's classic outfit from Raya and the Last Dragon. Now I really like this look. I think Raya looks like a true adventure princess. Does she have the amazing embellishments and little details in every little corner of her clothing? No, and she doesn't necessarily need it. I just happen to be drawn to those beautiful details within the clothing, and so that's why she ranks a little bit lower, but I think she's perfectly outfitted for her movie. Next, we're moving on up to number 28 on my list, which is Merida's dark teal dress from Brave. I really like this dress, and once again, because I struggle with being able to separate the dress from Merida's hair, I do want to say that I really love the color of this dress without even Merida wearing it. I think the dress itself is a beautiful color, but in all honesty, I don't think it overpowers her hair. I think it's very complimentary to her hair and the rest of her look. And so yeah, I really like the dark teal dress. But next we're moving on up to number 27 on my list, which is Jasmine's purple dress from Aladdin. Now, once again, she doesn't wear this dress for super long, but this is my favorite look that she actually wears within the movie. While I do love the fact that Jasmine is in pants, it's not necessarily accurate, the dress is a lot more accurate as to what she would have actually worn in the times. But again, it's not 100% accurate. I just prefer it to the other looks. Now, if this dress was in the teal color, that would be number one, by far. I do prefer Jasmine in the teal, but I think this dress suits her the best in her movie. But with that, we'll move on up to number 26 on my list, which is Mulan's ping outfit from Mulan. I love seeing Mulan in her ping outfit. I think this is such a great look for her. This is where she starts to have fun and feel free, and she's able to blossom a lot more in her life as opposed to being in all that constricting clothes and makeup. She doesn't feel comfortable that way, and so getting to see her explore other sides of herself is a lot more interesting. And while we have seen Mulan in her ping outfit in the parks before, it's a rare occurrence, and I only wish that we get to see more of the ping outfit in the future. Especially because the most recent Mulan dolls also come with a change of clothes, and the change of clothes that they happened to pick for her was the ping outfit. So here's hoping we get a lot more Mulan soldier outfits in the future. But next we're gonna move on up to number 25 on my list, which is Belle's pink dress from Beauty and the Beast. Now, I like this dress on Belle. I think she looks very, very beautiful. Again, she doesn't wear it for long, but I really do like this color on her. But out of Belle's outfits, it's probably my least favorite on her. But it does say a lot about Belle's fashion that this is the lowest ranking dress for her, but it still makes the top half of the list. And not straying too far from the Princess Belle topic, at number 24 is Belle's green dress, also from Beauty and the Beast. Now I feel exactly the same way I do about the pink. I simply like this color just a little bit more on her. And don't really have much else to say besides that. I just like this dress on her and I like green on her a little bit more than I do the pink. So next we'll move on up to number 23 on my list, which is Elsa's travel dress from Frozen 2. Now I really like this look on her. I think it is quite beautiful, but the one thing that I have trouble with it is that it doesn't necessarily look as great from far away as it does up close. Once you're able to zoom in and see the detail on the shoulders and all of the ice patterns, it's absolutely gorgeous. However, when the camera's all the way zoomed back, it really just looks like a plain blue outfit that she's wearing. And so I can't really give it anything more than B tier. Again, I really like this dress and I would really like to see this one in the Disney parks, but 
as for right now, we haven't really seen it and it's just gonna be in the B tier. But with that, we're moving on up to number 22, the final dress within the B tier, which is Ariel's wedding dress from The Little Mermaid. Now, this dress was actually inspired by Princess Diana's wedding dress. And while I love Princess Diana and think this is an iconic look on her, for Ariel, it doesn't do as much as it did for Diana. And I like it quite a bit on Ariel as well, but it's not one of the most iconic princess looks in my opinion. Disney used to sell the Ariel dolls wearing this dress instead of the other human looks. Each princess would have their own individual iconic look and Ariel's was the mermaid doll, but they also had a human form of Ariel and she was in the wedding dress, which is a good option for her but not my favorite dress that she wears as a human. We're gonna get to that in a little bit. And so yeah, to round out the B tier of dresses that I like, Ariel's wedding dress, I like it. But with that, we have reached the A tier. The A tier are full of dresses that I love. I think they look fantastic on the princesses. I think they are very uniquely featured in their movie to where we really remember these dresses. And I would be very confident in saying that I love all of these dresses. However, there's just something slightly missing that keeps them out of the S tier, so. Let's get into it. Starting off the A tier at number 21 on my list is Cinderella's wedding dress from the movie Cinderella. Now, while very simple in look, I think it is just absolutely perfect. Cinderella's wedding dress very much stays in line with what she ends up wearing to the ball. And I think this is good because it's an iconic look what she wears to the ball. And so we get to keep that very same energy around the princess in her big finale. It's just beautiful to see her run down the stairs with the prince in this dress. And I just really love it. With that, we're gonna move on up to number 20 on my list, which is Anna's coronation dress from Frozen 1. Technically the dress she wears during Elsa's coronation, not her own. <laughs> also known as the first time in forever dress. I love this dress and I think it is absolutely beautiful. Now this green dress in comparison to the other green outfits that we've talked about is a very different shade. It really makes Anna pop as a character. There's also a lot of detailing on this dress, which makes it very interesting to look at. And of course she sings one of her most iconic songs while wearing it, so we have to include it in the A tier. Next, moving on up to number 19 on my list is Tiana's wedding dress from Princess and the Frog. Now, while definitely a lot less ball gowny than the other wedding dresses that we've discussed so far, I really like the silhouette of this dress. I think the straps that go across Tiana's body make her look absolutely wonderful. I really love the gloves and I love the veil that she's wearing. And while yes, it is quite beautiful, it's a smaller look on her as opposed to a lot of the other ball gowns that we see her wearing. So it's going to rank at number 19 today, but fear not, we still have a lot of Tiana's wardrobe to discuss in this video. Next, moving on up to number 18 on the list is Anna's queen dress from Frozen 2. Now in Frozen 2, Anna is crowned the queen of Arendelle at the very end of the movie, and she comes out in this long, beautiful dress, and it is just everything you would expect from a queen of Arendelle. She looks regal and poised and elegant, and considering we see her as a relatively goofy character throughout the series, this is really a change in spirit for Anna. So yes, at number 18 is Anna's queen gown. I absolutely love seeing her in this dress, and I think it's a lovely look to wrap up Frozen 2. And so with that, we'll move on up to number 17 on my list, which is Aurora's blue dress from Sleeping Beauty. Now, I know that she wears this one longer than the pink dress, but we're gonna get to that one in a little bit. As for the blue dress, I think Aurora looks absolutely beautiful in this dress. It is seemingly the dress that the animators of the movie associated with her the most, considering she is the Sleeping Beauty, of course blue is more associated with nighttime. And the title card for the movie where it says Sleeping Beauty at the beginning is also blue. But I wanna talk about the styling of this dress because I think the pointed off shoulder look is so beautiful on her. And this is really one of the more angular looks for a Disney princess. You don't necessarily see a lot of the members of the Disney princess brand with a lot of sharp lines and angles. That sort of look is really reserved for more of the villain type character. But Aurora pulls it off in such a regal way that it just works absolutely perfectly. It does make her look soft and feminine the way that a lot of other princesses do in the softer clothing, but Aurora is able to pull it off with the angular look, and I think it's just an absolutely wonderful dress. But next we'll move on up to number 16 on my list, which is Mulan's armor from Mulan. Now, this is technically the ping look, but with all of the added armor on top, and I think she looks so cool in this outfit. We truly have not seen another Disney princess look like this, and while technically Mulan isn't a princess herself, 
her act of heroism absolutely garners her a position with the Disney princess brand. And so to see a Disney princess ready for battle is just so unbelievably cool. I had to include this in the A-list. Again, so rare that we get to see this in the parks, but it is such a cool impact to be able to see Mulan in this incredible outfit. But with that, we'll move on up to number 15 on my list, which is Moana's classic dress from Moana. Now, Moana's look in this movie is undoubtedly beautiful. Her dress and her top just fit the character design perfectly, and they're really an outfit that she's able to do a lot of athletic activities in. We see her helping the people of her island, Motunui, and also doing a lot of athletic activities in this dress. She's able to keep up with Maui, who is literally a demigod. And I actually also really like that she changes up her hairstyle in this movie. When she knows she has to do something athletic, she'll sometimes put it up in a little bun to keep it out of her way. But yes, I love this look. I think it's just an instant classic. As much as we all love Moana, I think her outfit is just beautiful. And it's absolutely a pleasure to see her in the Disney parks and to see this dress really come into reality. And moving on up to number 14 is a very specific dress. It's not the one you're going to think right away. And number 14 is Tiana's green dress from the very end of The Princess and the Frog when she is in Tiana's palace. This is the flapper-esque dress that she wears with her crown and furs. This is the one that she sings down in New Orleans in at the very end of the movie. I think this is such a beautiful look on Tiana. Green is obviously a gorgeous color on her, and to see her in a dress that is very fitting for the time period that she's from, in a color that she looks beautiful in, is so cool and so special, and we don't necessarily get that with a lot of other princesses. And it definitely brings home the fact that she is definitely a princess, and she is also a working girl. She is up there on that stage entertaining everybody in her restaurant, but it also very much feels like she could run back into the kitchen and do what she has to do. Tiana is a princess through and through, but she is a hardworking girl, and she's not about to give that up for a crown. I love this green dress, but it's definitely not my favorite green dress from this movie, so we'll get into that in a few minutes. But with that, we're moving on up to number 13 on my list, which is Belle's village dress from Beauty and the Beast. Now this dress is just iconic. She wears it at multiple points throughout the movie, and it was actually created in design to mirror that of Judy Garland's gingham dress from The Wizard of Oz. Again, just to create that instant iconic look for Belle. It is very simple, but very recognizable. When you see somebody wearing that blue dress with the white apron, it just immediately makes you think of Belle, and it's kind of her signature look, even though it's not my favorite one from this movie. You can meet her in the Disney parks when she's wearing it, and yeah, in my opinion, it's just absolutely iconic, and again, a relatively wonderful dress, considering it's a peasant dress. It really says a lot when a lot of these peasant dresses are ranking really high, even higher than a lot of other real princess dresses. But with that, we have reached the final outfit in the A tier. At number 12 on my list is Ariel's transformation dress from The Little Mermaid. Now, while this look is definitely an outlier from everything that she wears in the movie, considering it is so heavily 90s coated, it is a beautiful dress. While it is technically debated on whether or not it is a purple or a blue, I typically tend to remember it as purple, which I think is a very beautiful color on Ariel, considering that is the color of her shells. But yeah, to see Ariel so sad at the end that she's not able to be with Eric, and then having this transformation, and rising from the sea in this beautiful glittering dress, is just a sight to behold. And I actually wish we got to see a lot more of it in the parks. While I understand why Ariel's pink dress was technically chosen for her iconic Disney princess brand look, because it is a lot more full of a dress, it's a gown as opposed to this purple dress. This purple dress is my favorite human look from her in the movie, and I absolutely love it. And while it doesn't get a lot of screen time and it doesn't get a lot of love for being so heavily inspired by the 90s, I really love it, and I think she looks absolutely beautiful in it. But with that, we have reached the S tier. This is a tier that consists of my favorite Disney princess looks. In my opinion, these looks are undoubtedly iconic, not only complement each princess, but also elevate them, and are just simply gorgeous, gorgeous looks. So with that, we'll start off the S tier at number 11 on my list, which is Aurora's pink dress from Sleeping Beauty. I love this dress. While technically it is the same dress as the blue dress, 
it is a different color, and I think this color just makes Aurora absolutely stand out on the screen. I think pink looks so good on her considering she is a blonde, and while this dress is on her in the movie for less than 10 seconds, it is probably the look that most people think of when they think of Princess Aurora. So considering it has so little screen time and it's considered her main look in the Princess brand, I would say that's pretty iconic for her movie. I absolutely love this dress. I have nothing bad to say about it, and I I, I am a pink Aurora stan. I, I prefer the pink, but let me know if you prefer blue down in the comments. Up next at number 10 on my list, we've reached the top 10. At number 10 is Cinderella's ball gown from Cinderella. Now, I think Cinderella's iconic ball gown is so beautiful. The only reason it doesn't rank any higher than at number 10 is because 90% of the Disney community gets the color wrong. In the original animated movie, Cinderella's dress is silver, not blue. However, in certain scenes in this movie when she's in the darkness, it is a bluish hue in order to indicate that she is in darker scenery. And so blue really became the main iconic look for her in the princess brand. I honestly wish this weren't the case. I love Cinderella's silver dress. And while I don't think the blue looks bad on her, I much prefer the silver. Some people might say it looks a little bit too much like a wedding dress. I disagree. I think it is very sleek, very simple, yet truly iconic because it draws your attention to her and then upwards to her face and her beauty and her iconic personality. I think this ball gown is just wonderful. I would absolutely rank it higher. However, I just wish the blue dress wasn't as in the public focus as the silver, which I prefer. Moving on up to number nine on my list is Elsa's ice dress from Frozen 1. Now, speaking of iconic dress transformations, this one blew us away. I love Elsa's ice dress. Of course, it is revealed to us in Let It Go, which is arguably one of the most iconic Disney songs of all time. But yes, this dress is absolutely gorgeous. I think the blue suits Elsa's skin tone and hair perfectly. And I love the cape that is attached to the back. It adds such an element of glamour. Of course, the sparkles of ice all over her are just wonderful. And this is easily Elsa's best look in Frozen 1. Talk about iconic. This is just absolutely perfect. Perfect for her. But with that, we'll move on up to number eight on my list, which is Tiana's blue dress from The Princess and the Frog. Technically, Charlotte LaBeouf's dress lent it to Tiana. <laughs> yes, as we discussed, Tiana wears a different dress originally to the masquerade ball, but eventually she ends up getting all dirty, and so Charlotte, or Lottie, her friend, offers to lend her a beautiful blue dress. And I think this dress looks so beautiful on Princess Tiana. Having just learned that she was outbid for her restaurant, she's obviously quite sad in this scene, but I think she looks so gorgeous. I really wish she had actually made it downstairs in order to show everybody off this beautiful dress. And of course we have to talk about the iconicness. She kisses Prince Naveen in this dress and transforms herself into a frog. This is also the dress she wears on the front cover of the movie. And I think it's just so beautiful on her. Although there are other looks that I prefer still, over this one. With that, we're moving on up to number seven on my list, which is Snow White's classic dress from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. While this was the original Disney princess dress, I think it holds up as one of the most iconic, considering we got the original three primary colors in this dress. When you think of Disney princess, you can typically associate them with one color. In my opinion, this is the hardest to do with Snow White, considering half of her dress from the waist up is blue, half of the dress from the waist down is yellow, and she has red embellishments on her sleeves. I think the three colors together are just perfect on her. They don't distract too much from her hair and her face and her makeup, and it complements the character. It really adds this level of joy to see her in yellow, but also a level of comfort to see her in blue. We gotta hand it to the original Disney princess. She knows how to dress. <laughs> With that, we're moving on up to number six on my list, which is Moana's flower dress from the ending of Moana. Now, I think this might be kind of controversial, but I think this is Moana's best look in the movie. I love getting to see her flower crown and this beautifully ornate dress. It's just her look, but elevated for the end of the movie. And honestly, I'm kind of sad that this isn't her iconic princess look. I know we got a ton of time 
time with her classic look, but I think this one is just that extra level of elevated. The flowers perfectly suit Moana. I think red is a gorgeous color for her, and it really shows her in her element of victory, having saved her island of Motunui and restored the heart of Tefiti. I love this dress, and I cannot wait to see more fashion for Princess Moana when Moana 2 is debuted in theaters this November. But with that, we've reached the top five iconic looks of Disney princesses. At number five is Elsa's Snow Queen slash Fifth Spirit dress from Frozen 2. I love this dress, and I was shocked that I did. Now, this is a purely white dress, obviously having some embellishments, but I never expected Elsa to look quite that good in white. Considering the rest of her features are very light, I thought she would actually look very washed out in a fully white outfit, but this works perfectly on her. Again, she has those elements of the cape from the dress from Frozen 1, and she also has added elements that show that she is the fifth spirit. I think this is absolutely beautiful, and considering we also got a brand new hairstyle for her, which is just a down look, it's beautiful, and I think this is Elsa's best look by far out of both movies, Frozen 1 and Frozen 2. Next, we're moving on up to number four on my list, which is Belle's yellow dress from Beauty and the Beast. You might also call it the golden dress. This dress is so perfect on Belle, it isn't even funny. Now, as opposed to Ariel in her human form, where she ends up at this place and has to go with the dresses that are available to her, Belle's very much feels like she picked out this dress. And she did a great job picking it out. <laughs> when it comes time for Belle and Beast to dance and the camera pans to Belle, it is jaw-dropping if you see it for the first time. It is just absolutely beautiful to see uh, this girl that seemingly comes from a provincial town as a true princess. And what I love about it even more is that it translates perfectly into the Disney parks. Belle's dress in the parks is just perfect. They got it spot on, and it is truly magical to see this character have so much life in such an iconic look. But with that, we're moving on up to number three on my list, who is Ariel in her iconic mermaid look from The Little Mermaid. Now, I hesitated putting this look so high up because obviously I am biased to Princess Ariel, but I think the color combination of her hair, her seashells, and her tail just work absolutely perfect. This is the look where she sings the iconic part of your world and spends more than half the movie in just this one look. However, the reason why I can't rank it any higher than number three is that she doesn't want to be a mermaid. This is not the form that she feels comfortable with or that she wants to stay for the rest of her life. And so while it might be a really good look on her, she doesn't identify with it. And so I really can't put it any higher than number three. I wish I could put it at one, but I think you guys are gonna be very happy with who I put at number two and number one. So with that, we'll move on up to number two on my list, who is Tiana's iconic green ball gown from The Princess and the Frog. Now this look gets so little screen time, but it is such a good look for Princess Tiana. Seeing this look in theaters for the first time just absolutely had my jaw on the ground. It was such a wonderful reveal, especially because this is also technically a transformation dress. Tiana and Naveen are frogs and they end up kissing at the end of the movie, which makes Tiana a princess. There is this beautiful animation segment which transforms her into the princess that we know and love. And this dress is just beautiful. I love the leaf elements that are included and it truly emulates the bayou. Like it is nature truly bringing Tiana into her princess era. It is so beautiful, so wonderful, translates perfectly into the Disney parks, and I have truly nothing bad to say about it. But with that, we have reached number one on my list of iconic Disney princess outfits. And at number one is Princess Tiana in her almost there dress. I know that this dress is not one of the most beloved of the Disney community, but I absolutely love this look. Now, while you might not recognize this right away, it is the look that she does wear in Almost There. However, Almost There is done in a different animation style than the rest of the movie. So technically the dress that I'm referring to is the scene where Tiana and Dr. Facilier meet for the first time. Tiana wears this beautiful white dress with a flower in her hair and furs. Oh my god, I absolutely love this dress. I think she looks stunning in it. Once again, in theaters, my jaw dropped when I saw this scene because my god, she just looks so beautiful. And I really think the white dress with the gold accents against her skin tone is just Gorgeous, so perfect. And what I also love about this look is that she has a different hairstyle. Yes, her hair is bobbed in this scene, and while I do like her original hairstyle better with like the bun and the updo, 
I think this is a very welcome change. It shows us that we're not necessarily looking at a real life Tiana, but more so a dream sequence. So while it might be a controversial opinion, this is my absolute favorite Disney princess dress out of all of them. <gasps> and with that, we have talked about 60 Disney princess outfits. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these wonderful fashion moments from some of our favorite Disney heroines. If you liked today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And be sure to check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat at Nikki Mara for even more magic. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Stay magical. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see y'all real soon.